A black billionaire donates $20 million to the National Museum of African American History and Culture, and it wasn't Oprah. Stay tuned, and we will tell you who it is. Oakland Kid musicians took a knee while playing the national anthem, and you'll never guess where. The teacher base story is getting a lot of chatter on social media, and we're talking about geode inspired lips, so stay tuned. Welcome to What's the 4 and one your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kissy Cox. I'm Courtney Rashawn. And I'm Sydney Wayman. Onika McLean has the night off. Yes, so let's get a quick take on what's popping up. Well, recently, Nicki Minaj took to Twitter to find a girlfriend for her brother, Kaya. Okay. So, Black Girl Magic at JBaby Minaj asked Nicki if her brother asked her to do it to put it up, you know, put her up to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or if she was just being an annoying big sister. So, Nicki responded, <laughs> and I quote, annoying big sister for 500, Alex. Oh, uh-huh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Terrible. <laughs> yes. All right. So, on the lifestyle tip, Uber is requiring its drivers to take a selfie before picking up a passenger. This way, the company can confirm that the driver matches the person it has listed in its database. According to Uber, this extra step prevents fraud and protects drivers' accounts from being compromised. So that's a good yeah, layer that's a good thing. of extra protection. It's an improvement. Yeah. You guys know that the Magnificent Seven, a remake of a, a Western done in the early 60s, mm-hmm. uh, this one starring Denzel Washington, actually debuted at the top of the box office oh, this year. Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah. Denzel Washington loves love Denzel. Got I can't go wrong with Denzel. Of course you exactly. do. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> the film debuted at $35 million, but really, when you look at it, uh, people are saying that September 2016 box office is really low compared to 2015. Mm, this September, really? uh, the box office is only $266 million, um, mm-hmm. compared to last year when it was $700.9 million. Wow, In that's fact, almost three times this yeah. September Crazy. is the worst since 1996 when the first Wives Club ruled the box office uh, and very little else was out. So, you know, people <laughs> wow. are wondering... Um, where are all the somebodies who aren't going to the movies? They're Netflix and chilling. That's exactly. what they're doing. Please. Exactly. No, 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 I think there's yes, something to be said. There's something to be said for going to the movies. There's no experience like the big screen. That's true. That's true, but I know. But who wants to stay home? Yeah, exactly. People want to sit home on their sofa and be in the comfort oh, yeah. of their own home and watch yeah. watch the movie. Watch reality and watch TV. Exactly. Not reality TV, man. All right, <laughs> listen. Strut, a reality TV show about a transgender modeling agency, executive produced by Whoopi Goldberg has debuted on Oxygen, guys. It's, wow, it's wow. Pretty, interesting. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah. interesting. It's amazing how the world's changing. Now, yeah. let me ask you guys, are you guys on Tinder? No. no. Come on, come on. Nobody's going to admit to being on Tinder. Are you Tinder? on Tinder? No, of course not. Uh-huh. I'm a married man. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm a married man. Okay, yeah. But anyway, Tinder's iMessage app will now let you swipe while you chat. You know what that is? Of course. All right, well, if you know what it is, please hit us up on our Facebook page under comments or on our YouTube channel and tell us what it means. All right. All right. Well, more social media news. Can you believe Kanye West has recently joined Instagram after all this time? Really? Yes. I thought he was already there. No. But right. Well, within a few hours, his verified Instagram account amassed more than 234,000 followers. So he now has over 1.3 million followers, but he has no posts. Well, no, He's not he, following he anyone. one post. I checked. I went. He okay, has so, one So he recently, one, yes. One post. <laughs> one post. Wow. And he doesn't follow anyone, um, and he has a long way to catch up compared to his wife, Kim, who has 8.3 no, excuse me, eight, yeah, 83.4 million followers wow. on, on Instagram. Wow. That is, yeah. I wonder what they're following. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Alrighty, then. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> who is this mysterious black billionaire who donated $20 million to the new National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C.? Who? And it wasn't Oprah. It wasn't Oprah. Okay. Give me a drum roll, please. <laughs> It was Robert F. Smith, a private equity financier. Smith is founder, chairman, and CEO of Vista Equity Partners. Uh, His company is basically in the business of buying, growing, and selling off software companies. This guy is really amazing. You know what? I did some research on him, and he has a really interesting backstory. First of all, this guy went to school when Colorado schools were first desegregated back in like the, the late 60s, early 70s. And he was one of only two black people in the entire school. And what's so good about him, you know how most people, the venture capitalist types, they take companies, and then they strip all the money from it, and then they sell it off? 
right. lay people off. He actually hires people, sales people and engineers, and not just that, he doesn't go to the typical road like, you know, Ivy League schools or people going to like some, you know, pricey internship or what have you. He goes through this thing called this IBM personality app, and it actually winnows it down to the people who most want to work in tech. And so he gets people from like roofers, former roof people from really, really like unorthodox places. And so he really diversifies his pool that way. So he's a lot of black people, Latino people, Asian people working in his companies. And so that's really That's really very good. positive. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah, I like, I like this guy. Um, I think amazing. your characterization of uh, venture capitalists, though, is somewhat. Um, well, I mean, he's. <laughs> um, some, some, some do <laughs> yeah. buy but companies, strip them of their assets, lay off the workers. Do, but that's, yeah. the, but that's the bad, that's I mean, the bad not, reputation not that they have. Well, with you. Um, with a lot of people, though. But if, with a lot you of You know people. what? Maybe that's it. I'll create a reality TV show on venture capitalism. And maybe you'll learn with <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. But Who it's, knows? it's definitely a great thing. Definitely Who great knows thing. to Robert F. Smith for doing that? That's amazing. Yeah, that is. And on to more amazing news. Now, more than 100 Oakland kids made a really, really powerful statement in support of Callan. Um, Kaepernick. Now, the middle and high school students who make up the Oakland Unified School District's honor band, that's 100 and 55 of them, according to the district, play the national anthem before recent Oakland A's baseball games. Now, mm -hmm. just as the song hit a crescendo, the students took a knee. And guess what? The crowd applauded. That is really, really amazing. There's a lot of people who are saying, oh my God, if you sit down during the anthem, if you do this, you take a knee, you're not patriotic. And it really was good to see that these people really supported the students in their activism. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, that definitely is. Well, I think the reality, though, is that we need to get to a point where we understand that protesting or protest is being very patriotic. That's one of the rights yes, we have. Yes, exactly. You know, I think we have exactly. to be concerned about these attitudes people expressed about, you know, if you don't uh, salute the flag or whatever. I mean, it's nonsense. You know, the reality is that it wasn't until, I think, um, early two, 2000s, but it was relatively recently when uh, players started standing up during a, play, uh, during a Star Spangled Banner. Mm -hmm. And it was done because the Department of Defense paid the yes, NFL it was for money. to show some kind of patriotism. So, you know, this whole thing is crap. And all it's these white folks who are coming out against... <laughs> it's bogus. It's bogus. It's bogus. No, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. What did I say? No. Keep going. Go ahead. All these people talking to You want to fight you. All right, just go on. All these people... want one rant right now. Go ahead. All these people talking this trash should step back and, as my man said... Sit down. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's true what you're saying because even right here in Brooklyn, you know, Councilman Jamani Williams, mm. he also, he decided, you know what, during the Pledge of Allegiance when people usually, you know, stand up, he decided to sit down and he got hate mail because of that. Yeah. He got people calling him a, a plantation monkey. Wow. All types of racist hate mail because of that. And he's like, you know what, this is, this is our right. This is what we're fighting it for. It doesn't make me less patriotic to do this. Right. But what's curious, so, what's interesting yeah. though, I mean. People get really offended. Yeah, people yeah. are wondering people whether it's the Donald Trump syndrome expressing itself with all this kind of mm. hate mail coming out. You know, you have to wonder. Yeah. You have to wonder. You know, yeah, the elevating the alt-right, as they say. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and our next story, cosmetic story, really puts that statement to the test. <laughs> <laughs> Some think it's hot, others not so much. You guys be the judge. Keep it where you got it. <laughs> Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Krugs, Zink or Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, girl. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Welcome back to What's the 4 and 1. Now, Courtney's bringing us a beauty trend that is flying under the radar, and our executive producer hopes it stays that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, a New York City-based makeup artist, Johanna Adams, is known for her stunningly artistic lip creations on Instagram. Um, she posted her, her latest creation, which are the geode-inspired lips. So cue up the photo, okay? <laughs> when we saw this photo on Instagram, it had over 16.4 um, thousand, 16 thousand likes. A lot, a lot. So according to BuzzFeed, the look is created using a combination of heavy glitter, a color base, and a thick, clear lip gloss. Um, you can find more 
you know, on social media about this lip trend. But we'd like to hear your thoughts on um, Johanna Adams' Geo's Inspired Lip Creation. So hit us up on Facebook and Instagram at What's the 411 TV. Well, I can just say right now, I think it looks gross. I do not <laughs> like it it's at all. It's definitely interesting. It's, it's something that you would wear, like, for a costume, like on a, you know, theater or some type of movie, like space age type movie. It doesn't look like something you could ever actually wear in the street. Right. Well, I mean, well, it's very know, dramatic. I'm sure honest, that she totally, went to... Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, so what sorry. I was saying is when she I'm probably, sorry. when she created it, she probably went to the extreme, but I'm sure there's a variation of it where it's toned down and you actually could wear it without it looking so... Like um, you have rocks boy. on your lips. Yeah. Well, I would think it looked like you have rocks on your lips. It does. What I find most interesting is that um, there have been previous, like, lipstick <laughs> things that women have come up with, with the really dark colors and the light colors, then the eyeshadows, and, you know, these, these I eye eyelashes. I mean, they're blowing my mind. So, I mean, what I'm going to say is, like, I'm most of the stuff y'all guys come up with is, like, should be under the radar. <gasps> You're a hater. So you prefer You're a hater. no makeup. I didn't say I prefer no makeup, but I find that most black women are naturally beautiful, so... Um, I'm not uh, saying that. Ah, nice no save. Yeah, but, definitely but, nice save. But a little bit. <laughs> but what, I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, this weird stuff comes out. All women are naturally beautiful. Did I say black women? Yes, I did. Oh, it's okay. Well, you we know, are, but we're all descendants of black people, so all <laughs> yeah. women are black women. But anyway, uh, the point I'm trying to make is that this stuff comes out, and through time, it's embraced, and it becomes part of what women are doing. Right. Well, makeup is supposed to enhance what you already have. Um, unless you, you know, are doing a show or like Kizzy mentioned, you know, costume party or things like that. So makeup um, definitely is an asset for all women, you know. I'm sure it is. Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't want that woman around me, though. Oh, Lord. I don't think Lord. she would want to be around you anyway. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> shots fired. <laughs> Look, Onika. Oh, I mean, Courtney. Oh, my. I'm just teasing. No, you're not. Yes, you I am. It. Yes, yeah, I am. Yeah. You <laughs> So you guys keep it locked. We'll be right back with our social media team, Jasmine Blake and Nicole Kiki. The average tax takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Welcome back to What's the 4 and one Hello, ladies. Hi. <laughs> so tell us what's going on in What's the 4 and one TV social media world. Yes, yeah, so recently on Transformation Tuesday, we posted a, a throwback picture of Tiana Taylor back when she made her debut on My Super Sweet 16. Okay. And we paired that with a more recent picture of her snapback body just months after she uh, gave birth to her daughter. Wow. Yeah. I'm saying, I saw that picture. She looked... Like excellent, I'm like that's that's gold. Thank body. you, body. Did you gold see her in the Kanye body. West um, video? Oh yes, of course. Oh my gosh, she killed it. She did. Yeah. she looked great. Yeah, yes. she did. Yes. She looked yes. amazing, amazing. But the thing is, she said she doesn't even go to the gym though, which is what, like, what? Yeah, like, she how do says you do that? that. I mean, but she's a dancer though, so naturally that's just how she. You know, her body's lean. Yeah. I'm jealous. She is blessed. <laughs> she yeah, is blessed. Very and blessed. Hashtag gorgeous. blessed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Jasmine. And mostly everyone seemed to like the photo. I mean, right now, the Tiana Taylor photo has over 500 likes on her Instagram. Wow. So we just wanted wow. to say thanks to everyone for liking and commenting on it. Yes, and That's also thank cool. you to everybody who commented on our uh, Teacher Bay picture. We were surprised oh. to find out that a lot of you, like, really didn't have an issue with how she was dressed. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, I didn't really see the big deal. I think it's just because she's thick, she's curvaceous, and right. so people have a problem. She was covered up to her neck. Yeah, yeah. like her knees were yeah. even covered. I'm like, what is the big deal? Like, it's not. Her it's dress not an issue. was pretty long. Yeah, yeah. And because and because you said because she's curvy, mm -hmm. you know, um, most women with body. You know, sometimes it can be like a little intimidating. You know, people are like, oh my gosh, you know, but she's covered completely. Exactly. You, and know? you know what bothers me too? People are like, oh my god, like people are not going to be able to concentrate or whatever, whatever, or little boys are going to be looking at her. I'm like, why is it the it falls on a woman to police what guys are going to, how guys are going to mm -hmm. react to your yeah, body? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly. for, we got to teach our sons from a young age to Self -control. control that for yourself. Exactly. So I think and that's, that's important. Yeah, and not to sit there and like with x-ray vision, <laughs> with, uh, you know, with a blouse on, just picturing what's underneath, <laughs> <Right>. you know? <laughs> Yes, and Googly I want to give a shout out to Dana Sorrentino. Thank you for commenting on our Inst Facebook picture. Thank you. Thank and you. also, shout out to a couple of people on Instagram. Shout out to I'm underscore just underscore Yvette. I love underscore Charlie underscore Peter <laughs> yes. and Jim Swinger for their comments on Instagram for the Teacher Bay post. So keep those comments coming at What's the 41 TV on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Yes, yes. Well, thank you, ladies, and keep those comments coming. 
off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. On this week's segment of Caribbean Cookup, we have some black girl magic on the set. Her name is Shola Roberts. She's a dynamic Caribbean-American teacher, educator, and dancer. And she's committed to using dance to inspire, touch, and change lives. Shola was recently chosen as the Barnes & Noble My Favorite Teacher of the Year and was featured on the front page of Caribbean <laughs> Life newspaper. Welcome, Shola. Hi, Kizzy. Thanks for having me. Of course. You, you, you helped me to dance. Oh. And so, like, now I had to bring you <laughs> on the <laughs> show. I do remember that class. <laughs> yeah, and I was, like, huffing and puffing, like, oh, I'm tired. I can't do this. So, yes, like I said, you helped me with Soka. But it's really interesting how... Soka has really been having a moment now. Like, it's getting so popular. What do you think it is that's making it popular now? I mean, it's just the individuals that are committed to putting the Caribbean on the map. You know, there are individuals who are passionate about the Caribbean. And then there are individuals that are passionate about the art of dance, you know. And when you're passionate about something, you're just going to keep working towards um, bringing recognition to that art form. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think also as carnival becomes more and more popular, more and more people are exposed to it, it's becoming. Definitely. Um, and, you know, that goes to, goes without saying, especially with artists like Masha Montano and Bungie Garland who are crossing over and, you know, just doing amazing things with the music. Um, folks are wanting to know more about the culture. And you have individuals wanting to tell our story. So what better way than to let that happen? Right, exactly. And speaking of soca and the culture and Caribbean, mm -hmm. you're a principal dancer with Dance Caribbean Collective. So talk to us about what that is. Um, Dance Caribbean Collective was founded by Candace Thompson, and she was just looking for an opportunity or a platform for contemporary Caribbean artists to share their work. Mm -hmm. um, this is my second year with the organization, and I will be presenting um, a second body of choreographic work with um, Dance Caribbean Collective June 11th. So I'm okay. looking forward to just sharing my story, sharing my voice, dancing my Caribbean with the public. Yes, I like that. I know you guys also go into schools and stuff and you do all that as well. Yeah, definitely. We, um, you know, one of our topics, one of our sh concerns is to do outreach within the community. Okay. Right. Yeah. So um, what better way than to make connections with the children, with the teachers and, you know, bring an awareness because I'm sure there are students who would love to learn more about their culture. So going into the schools and just trying to bridge the gap between what it is that goes on at home and what right. you learn at school um, can be an, an amazing experience. Yes. So, like I was saying, you have a lot of exciting things going on right <laughs> now. You were, you know, my favorite teacher award with Barnes & Noble. Talk about how that came about. Was that like a surprise to you? Um, it was. Um, I have a student named Ashley, and Ashley came up from Guyana um, this year. And, okay. you know, she was very shy and timid, and I started this dance ensemble program mm -hmm. at MSD 54 School of Integrated Learning located in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. And for some reason, Ashley wanted to join. Um, in addition, there was these flyers around school. And I said, Ashley, um, you know, just pushing students. And I pushed a number of them. And I was like, do you want to write this essay? And she was like, yeah, I would love to write the essay. You know, and that was actually the first time I actually seen her come out of her shell. Wow. You know, and just having giving her that opportunity we would have never thought in a million years that we would have been selected you know you just do things just out of wanting to see your students succeed right. wanting to see them push themselves wanting to see them go beyond what they think they're capable of right and this black girl magic happens yes black girl <laughs> magic right here is so beautiful <laughs> so i mean you know while we're on the topic of schools i mean people always talk about you know let's have the common core let's make students have higher grades in math and reading and so on and so forth. And we never really talk about the arts. As an arts teacher, how important is arts to your students? Well, I'm only coming from talking from experience. I remember going to school and my arts courses, my chorus class, my dance class was what 
drove me to go to school. It's what gave me the incentive to wake up in the morning and go to school. It wasn't the ELA. I mean, you know, powers to the ELA teachers and the math <laughs> teachers, you know. Right. But I feel I felt like my chorus teacher and my dance teacher had an, a major impact on my life, which is why I decided to pursue dance to begin with as a career. Um, exactly. And so even being in a school where, you know, I feel like these core classes sometimes take precedence over the arts classes, I feel like it's the arts classes that teach these students skills that they may not be able to get in a ELA or in a math class. You know, these social skills, this idea of being confident and exactly. having self-esteem, you exactly. know. So I know what I'm here for. I'm going to stick to it. <laughs> arts teachers unite. <laughs> yes, listen, I took dance. Like, I took dance all through, like, elementary school, mm -hmm. all through junior high school. I loved it. I loved it. Took acting classes. It was just such a, so important. It mm -hmm. was like, you know, I like the English. I loved all mm -hmm. that all, too. But Definitely. arts are so important, so. And we fail to realize that with the arts, you can tie all of those aspects together. You can tie the literature, you can tie the science, you can tie the math, you can tie the history. You know, it's it's not disconnected. It's actually the the center or the nucleus that holds everything together. Ah, see, I like how you put mm -hmm. that science in there, girl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you don't just teach in New York City, though. I mean, you teach uh, in all over the world, <laughs> and you actually went back to Grenada, yes. where you're originally from, and you taught there. What I was did. that experience like? amazing um wow. it was humbling um i was honored you know because when i was younger one of my goals you know and you think about things but when you see it actually coming to life it's it's like okay. i'm speechless right, right. <laughs> so right. just going back home i had the opportunity to teach a number of courses for classes for a week for this diversity in dance workshop um, and I was the featured teacher for a week um, and I taught them traditional West African dance and they were just so open and receptive to the wealth of knowledge that my teachers gave to me you know mm -hmm. so I feel like in turn it's only best for me to give it back to them you know and to push them and to know that you know there are artists on the island doing work and you can succeed and you this can be you Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. That's really, you know, both sides, you know, the diaspora and Definitely. the Caribbean coming together. Coming it's, together. It's, it's an exchange. And yes, yeah, so speaking of that, St. Martin, talk to us quickly about St. Martin. You go to St. Martin? I, yes, I'm going to St. Martin this weekend, um, real turn, real short and last minute. But I was asked by one of my dancing peers, someone that I danced with way back in the day, to teach um, a segment for her Arts Life Foundation audition. Um, Nicole DeWeaver, who is the president and founder of Arts Life Foundation, um, gave me the opportunity to, you know, teach the students soca dance, something that, you know, even in the Caribbean is being acknowledged, you know, right. because we're always trying to do the modern and the ballet, but we need to understand our roots as well, you know, and so to tie that in and to you know, get them doing this amazing stuff will be amazing. And I'm looking forward to this opportunity. So thank you, Nicole. Black Girl Magic. Okay, where can they take your classes? Where can they take my <laughs> classes? Well, um, in addition to being a dance teacher, a dance educator, I'm also a fitness professional. Mm -hmm. And I still work, I work at Crunch Gyms. I'm at Crunch Park Slope and Crunch 19th Street every Monday and Friday. And currently, I am touring the nation with one of my peers from Howard University. Woo -woo. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are everywhere. Oh, my gosh. Um, one of my Howard peers um, um, promoting Antigua's carnival band Fuse. Um, it's a fusion between soca dance, which I teach, and Asa Fitness. Mm -hmm. So... I'm yeah. teaching all, uh, all over the country, um, in New York City. Just look me up, and <laughs> it'll awesome. be a grand time. Thank you so much, Shola. This was so much fun, and I will be taking your class. Yes. Very, very soon. Yes. I'm going to crop over. Come on. I got to get in shape. Come on. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Never. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. 
Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Cruz, Zinc or Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Welcome back. So here's a look at some upcoming events that are happening in the pipeline. Yes, and Prince, the official Prince tribute, a celebration of life and music is ready to reverberate on October 13th at the Excel Energy Center in the twin city of St. Paul, Minnesota. Performers include Stevie Wonder, Christina Aguilera, John Mayer, Shaka Khan, Anita Baker, Tori Kelly, and Prince in the nice. circle members. What? Such as the reunited New Power Generation, Morris Day in the Time, Judith Hill, Liv Warfield, and Third Eye Girl. I'm hyped. I wish yeah. I could go. Oh my God, it's going to be an amazing <laughs> show. <Yes. laughs> well, singer and actress Queen Latifah has teamed up with comedian Mike Epps to produce a new indie com comedy titled The Trap. The film will star Epps and rapper T.I. Nice. Love T.I. is two brothers trying to save the family's rundown restaurant. So it's set to, film this, to start filming this fall. Hmm, cool. That should be interesting. Yeah. Moving in the sun. Definitely. And the annual Real Sisters of the Diaspora Film and Lecture Series will kick off this year with an awards gala at the Schomburg Center on October 14th. Kathy Hughes, founder of TV One and Radio One, will be honored with the Trailblazer Award and sing singer, songwriter, and actress Kimberly Nicole will perform. The Real Sisters Film Festival will take place October 22nd and 23rd at Long Island U University's Brooklyn campus. For tickets, go to www.realsisters.org. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Never. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Sadly, we bid farewell to actor Bill Nunn, who played Radio Raheem in Spike Lee's movie, Do the Right Thing. According to Spike Lee's Instagram post, Nunn died at his home in Pittsburgh after a long bout with leukemia. He was just a few weeks shy of his 63rd birthday. May he rest in peace. We'll be right back. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. Well, that's going to do it for this week's episode of What's the 4 on 1, your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. And we're going to close out the show with a clip from Reagan Ali's Soul Gone Challenge on Instagram. So keep it locked until the end. Until next week, check out our website www.whatsthe411.com and remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 411 TV. Yes, please check us out and we just might mention you on the show. I'm Kizzy Cox and on behalf of Courtney Rashawn and Sydney Wayman, thank you for watching What's the 411. We'll see you next time. I got addictions to people who like my ignitions By intellectually spitting no fiction Arisen with ambition Fighting composition Screwing the schisms and isms Of this violent, vicious, vile vision Look, the more days that we go Shot dead on the flow Instagramming a new one Hashtag no spray guns You whipping your ride They're whipping our guys You cannot deny They're blurring the lines Look, the ones in position On a mission Imprison the nation Bound by cultural deprivation In disguise Systematic lies Burglarizing minds Vandalizing timelines but majority say blind